Hi. Hola. Hi, here is Mr. Dozier. This is Michael Bradley. Hey, I'm Memphis. Hey. Hola. Hello. I'm here with Soccer.com. 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 And I'm talking with my friends at Soccer.com. See you soon. Hey guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com, bringing you my review plus on feet video of the Adidas A17.1 leather in the new Turbo Charge Pack colorway. So for those that don't know, this is actually the leather upper variation of the A17.1, a top end model with leather at the toe, and obviously it's low cut, unlike the 17.1 Prime Knit, or the 17 plus pure control, the laceless boot. And of course, in today's video, we'll take a closer look at the colorway, being that this is part of the new turbocharged pack. We'll talk tech specs, performance features, talk about the weight of the shoe, as well as take a look at how they fit and feel on feet. So if you're interested in learning more about these, stick around and watch the entire video. If you're interested in a pair for yourself, I'll leave a little pop-up on screen, or you can click the first link down below in the description. That'll take you to the review page on my website where you'll find Buy It Now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes. We will be able to pick these up below their normal $200 retail price. So again, if you're interested in a pair, first link down below, go ahead and check it out. Of course, top end model from Adidas. They do come with a string bag featuring the Adidas and Ace branding, but that is all you will get in regards to extras. As far as the colorway is concerned, of course, part of the new Turbo Charge pack, and you do get the green, you get some black, you get some white, and you get a little bit of the metallic copper in the Adidas branding here at the front, as well as the Adidas logo there on the back. But that is pretty much it for the copper color. So it's a very subtle detail on this particular colorway where it'll be a little bit more prominent on some of the other turbocharged boots, including the ones within the A17 line. So what's interesting about this shoe, and I guess distinctively different, with the leather model in general is that the toe is a completely separate color to the rest of the upper. And I know we've seen that from some of the regular colorways, but this I think is a pretty cool design. I like the look of this shoe in general. It's cool looking to say the least. So you get the black leather at the toe and then it transitions into the control skin material for the rest of the upper. That does have the black lines running through the neon green, which again, cool little detail there. It gives this a very unique kind of modern look with the old school leather at, there at the front. You get green laces, pretty straightforward there. Black control skin and ace branding on the medial side. Your Adidas stripes, which are fused onto the surface of the control skin, are white with a black outline. And then you're gonna find that the liner is black in color with a green insole. And then the sole plate, green at the heel, and then black towards the front, kind of fades right there in the middle. But this is a non-wearable finish. So keep in mind that there is nothing that's gonna wear off. The coloring is actually part of the sole plate itself versus being printed on the surface like you might find on a pure control or any of the $300 models from Adidas. And then the stud tips, they're translucent black at the heel and translucent white there at the front. All in all though, pretty cool looking shoe. Let me know what you guys think though down below in the comment section. So with this particular shoe, again, everybody wants to compare Adidas products to Nike products and Nike really isn't producing anything that I would say compares all that well to this particular shoe. The automatic comparison that a lot of people draw is that of the Tiempo Legend 6 because you get kangaroo leather at the toe with a little bit of an internal support cage in place of stitching. But the problem with comparing this to the Legend is one, I think the quality of the leather on the Legend is actually nicer than what you'll get here. And two, the amount of leather you're actually getting on this shoe is so minimal that it's kind of difficult to call this a leather boot. The entire midfoot and top of the foot is not leather or isn't gonna offer a padded feel at least. It's difficult to put this in the same class as something like a Tiempo Legend. Can you compare this to the Copa 17.1? Again, I don't really think so just because it's a full leather upper. If you want a true leather experience from an Adidas boot, that's kind of what you should go for. But what this does kind of offer if you're a fan of kind of Adidas leather products is it reminds me a lot of the older leather F50 Addy Zeros where you only got the leather in the toe box and forefoot and the rest of the shoe is synthetic. It gives you a little bit of kind of a dual sensation in terms of touch on the ball and that it is gonna be more padded and softer feeling on your foot at the toe, whereas the top of the foot and the midfoot area is gonna have more of a thin, pingy kind of barefoot sensation. I'm personally not a fan of that. I like to have a more uniform touch across the entire foot, but I know that those leather Addy Zero models were extremely popular, partially because of the duality that they had in regards to feel on the ball. And that's kind of what you're getting here with this A17.1 leather. So that's how I would kind of go about recommending this particular shoe. The leather at the front, it is decent quality. It's on the thinner side overall, and it is nicely reinforced with this internal support cage that they've implemented. Also looks pretty cool, but again, not a lot of it. The transition point, 
very clear to see. The part that's black that is leather, the part that's green is not. So you have green, which is control skin, that same textile material with a fuse overlay that kind of reinforces the whole thing, along with an internal liner that has not an overly thin touch on the ball, but it is on the thinner side. It doesn't have much stretch to it. It does have somewhat of a plasticky feel in this particular implementation, just because the liner is quite thick. But for the most part, it feels okay on feet. Nothing really to, uh, to, to criticize too heavily on this particular shoe. Uh, the actual wrap across the top of the foot is entirely one piece. So this is, again, reminiscent to what you're going to find from the A17.1 Primeknit to a certain extent. And of course, it is all that same control skin material. Laces run through the middle as well, where the bottom three lace positions are kind of that dual lace hole system. And then the top two are basically just lace loop placeholders, which is pretty cool. Unlike the other top end ace models, this has a low cut, which I personally do prefer. It doesn't really feel different than the mid cut ones like the A17.1 Prime Knit. Just, it just doesn't have the extension piece basically. So uh, same general construction in the heel area, maybe a little bit softer towards the back just because there isn't as much structure. But for the most part, it feels pretty similar. You just have less bulk with this particular design, which again, I personally prefer. The back comes up a little bit higher than normal, but again, nothing that's super noticeable when you're actually wearing the shoe. The heel liner is a really nice synthetic suede material with a decent amount of padding back there. Give you guys a quick look at the insole, which is fully removable. It's the comfort insole that you would uh, get with a pure control basically. So it does feature a mesh liner on top, and then it's just a single layer of this black foam with some perforations running through the forefoot and midfoot area just to shave a little bit of extra weight. Nothing too crazy as far as the insole is concerned, but it does get the job done. And then moving on to the sole plate and stud pattern, this is identical to what you're gonna find on the A17.1 Prime Knit, technically on the pure control as well, minus the boost foam, which doesn't really make a big impact at all. So it's a TPU plastic construction with the added one piece heel counter. And of course the FG AG stud pattern from the Ace line with all conical studs, gets the job done on firm natural grass and works okay on artificial grass as well. In regards to weight though, that's kind of something that's a little bit interesting about this shoe. In a size nine US, these guys weigh in at 6.9 ounces. So out of the three top end models from Adidas, this one, the 17.1 Prime Knit and the 17 Plus Pure Control, this one is actually the lightest and partially because it's a low cut shoe versus a mid cut shoe. I know everybody's really into the whole mid cut thing, but when you add more material to make the shoe higher, that's gonna increase the weight of the shoe. So the fact that this, this is low cut means that it's gonna be a little bit lighter than what you'll get from those other models. Not to mention it's gonna feel quite a bit different because it is a very different construction overall. So uh, fairly light at 6.9 ounces, not too much to complain about there. Certainly not gonna feel heavy on your feet. That's enough about the tech specs and performance though. Let's take a look at the fit and feel of this boot. So you can see here on the right shoe, I actually swapped in some junior length black reflective SR4U replacement laces. And the reason I went for junior length is just because you don't necessarily need super long laces given the lacing system that they've implemented here. That's something that's gonna vary depending on the size that you're wearing though. So keep that in mind. Anyways, if you are interested in a pair of SR4U laces for yourself, the website to go to is www dot sr4ulaces.com there'll be a little pop-up on screen as well as a link down below in the description so if you're interested to pair be sure to go ahead and check that out i thought the black accented really well against the green background where the majority of the laces are positioned so tie these up really quickly again because of the one piece design normally i would tuck my shoes into the side you can't really do that on this shoe you can but you kind of have to go across and then under it just doesn't end up working out that well so i'm just going to leave the laces like that which again I wouldn't normally do. So getting them on, pretty straightforward. Definitely easier than what you're gonna find from the 17.1 Prime Knit or Pure Control with their mid-cut design just because the low cut allows for a little bit of a bigger opening and they're just frankly easier to get on. Uh, no, no way to really uh, complicate things here. Not a, a huge opening, but this part is elasticated where there isn't any fused material. So you can stretch it a little bit, which definitely does help. Tie this one up really, really quickly and we'll get a look at both shoes on feet. So out of the box, the shoes are quite comfortable. Again, wouldn't necessarily compare them to Copa 17.1s, really wouldn't compare them to Legend 6s either. Kind of has its own unique feel. And again, it's reminiscent of those older F50 Adi Zeros with the leather at the toe, which has some nice softness to it, as in the midfoot, which definitely has a stiffer, kind of firmer, thin sensation on your foot. So in regards to responsiveness, they're gonna be quite good. 
Uh, and overall comfort level, I would say that these are more comfortable than what you'll get from the Primate variation of the A17 and definitely more comfortable than the Pure Control model as well. So if I was picking an A17 model to wear, it probably would be these over the other two, just because I do find them fairly comfortable. A little bit snug through the midfoot for my liking, but again, personal preference, everyone fits in shoes a little bit differently. As far as the actual width of the shoe is concerned, again, they are tightest through the midfoot, but I wouldn't necessarily say that they are narrow. You get good width through the forefoot and toe area because it is leather, it's also gonna have a little bit of stretch to it after some wear time. And for the most part, they'll fit most people as long as you don't mind a tighter fit through the middle. Um, but again, not ideal for wide feet, but will fit most people pretty comfortably. And as far as sizing is concerned, I'm wearing my usual size nine US here and the fit and the length is absolutely perfect. So if you are looking to order a pair of these for yourself, I would strongly recommend going true to size in order to achieve the best possible fit. So that is pretty much it guys. Uh, that's pretty much it for my review of the leather a 17.1 in the turbocharged pack colorway. Again, if you're interested in a pair for yourself, you can click the little eye in the corner of the screen or the first link down below in the description. That'll take you to the review page on my website where you'll find buy it now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes where you'll be able to pick these guys up below their normal $200 retail price. If you have any questions regarding this shoe, leave them down below in the comments and I definitely will get an answer out to you. If you enjoyed today's video, found it helpful and informative, be sure to support it with a like. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all of my social media information linked down below in the description as well. And other than that, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. And as always, thanks for watching.